Mega Mike the Movie Man. And today I have a mega movie plan. Today, I'm back with another mega video for you all. Today is the Oscars day, so we get to celebrate as film fans. And with this video, I'm gonna be ranking all 10 best picture nominees from the worst to the best. So if you wanna see my favorite best picture nominee, then definitely stick around throughout the entire video. Also, this is just my personal list, so I know our list rankings are gonna be completely different. So let me know in the comments below, how would you end up ranking these movies? But without further ado, let's get started. Now to get into our 10th and last place spot, and this is clear that this goes to the power of the boring. Wait, wait, sorry, I meant the power of the dog. Wow, to me, this movie was mind-numbingly boring. I did not enjoy this movie at all, and I could not even get through this movie. To me, it was a Western movie with no action. Like, who asked for that? To me, there was nothing outstanding about this movie or entertaining in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it was well put together from a filmmaking standpoint. Yes, all the technical shots were there. I get it. But you also have to have entertainment to a movie to have some kind of enjoyment out of it. And to me, just nothing exciting about this movie. Nothing that moved me in this movie. Nothing that inspired me. Just nothing that a movie should be doing. It just didn't do it for me. Yeah, this movie, to me, very bottom of the list. If you can make it through this movie, you deserve an award of some sort because I just couldn't on this one. Hey, uh, tell me this isn't really happening. Now we're into our ninth spot and we got Don't Look Up on this list right here because to me, I don't even know why this movie was nominated for an Oscar. If you look at this list of movies here and you're like, hey, which is the one that doesn't belong? Most people would probably say Don't Look Up. Now, I was initially really excited for this movie. You had Leonardo DiCaprio and he's my favorite actor of all time. Heard it was like a satire comedy. So this movie could have been great. But no, to me, it just wasn't very funny. It tried to force some humor, but it didn't make me laugh barely at all. And to me, it was really slamming some messages over the audience's head in this one, like very on the nose. So I thought the messages were really important. And so I'm glad messages were in the movie, but I just wanted it to be a little bit more subtle about the messages because to me, the humor, the entertainment value definitely took a back seat to the messages it was trying to promote. So all around just did not work as an entertaining movie. That's why it's lower on this list. Now to get into our eighth spot, and we got Drive My Car. This is the last movie I watched on this nominee list. I was holding off on this one because it's a super long movie. It's three hours. So I actually had to split it up over two days. I watched half of it last night, half of it this morning, so now I can talk about it. And to me, yeah, this movie is way too long, did not need to be three hours. I mean, longer than the Batman, like what were they thinking for a movie like this? This movie should have been an hour and a half. And you know what? This movie is a little bit higher up on the list than a couple others because I do think there was something interesting going on here. There were some characters I was interested in and I wanted to see how the story played out. And I felt like if the movie focused up and we focused on that, we could have got somewhere a lot quicker. This car did not drive fast enough. This movie should have been an hour and a half. And normally I say cut out 15, 30 minutes to a long movie. No, cut out half this movie. Should have been an hour and a half. Way too much fluff, but it is up a little bit higher on the list. Because even though it was kind of a long and boring-ish movie, there were some parts that I was still interested in and I did want to see how the story played out. So it gets a little bit higher up on the list, but not by much. We went across the water. They wouldn't understand the way we talk. If they can't understand you, then they're not listening. You know who you are, don't you? Now at number seven, we're gonna have Belfast. Now I did a full on in-depth review of this movie, so I'll definitely link that video in the description below. So after you watch this video, go back and check out that review. But I'll just give kind of an overview of some of my thoughts on this movie. This movie is very slow. It's definitely a slow burn, 
but I think by the end of the movie, it does get somewhere. And so I enjoyed it overall. I think the actors in this movie do a wonderful job, especially the kid main actor. He's definitely the heart of the movie. And when he goes to the movie theaters to see the movies on the big screen, and just to see kind of how his world lights up and the joy he gets from it, to me, that's what made the movie worth it to me. And then also just giving us some information on what was going on in Ireland during that time between Northern and Southern Ireland, Belfast, all that historical information. I thought they gave us some good details in the movie. And so I think it was actually a quite informative movie. So I think it did that part well, but definitely a slower paced movie. And there was even some people in my theater that totally walked out of it because they could not understand the accents in the movie. So definitely a movie you really have to pay attention to, but I think it ended well enough dreams make good stories but everything important happens when we're awake hey you put on some muscle i did no at number six we're gonna have dune and i know some of you are wondering why is this movie so low on the list that's probably your number one on your own list i totally get it if you put it way really higher up on your list it is a big blockbuster of a movie and i did enjoy this movie in terms of filmmaking technical aspects this movie did it perfectly cinematography fantastic score sound design you name it just how this movie looked and sounded was awesome. I could just look at this movie, hear this movie, and then just enjoy it off of those reasons alone. So it was a very well put together movie. However, it is a half of a story. And to me, I always put story first in a movie. And I think they really should have made Dune into one movie. I don't think it should be two parts. So once I see the second part, maybe my mind will change and this movie will go up higher later on. But for now, when you only get half of a story and so the story kind of just ends abruptly and out of nowhere, yeah, it's gonna bring it down a little bit lower on the list. Yeah, from what I saw, it was entertaining in a few sequences, but I do think we needed more to make it a complete package of a movie, and that's why it's just a little bit more mid-tier on my list right now. But part two could be a whole different story. Is he man or beast? At number five, we're going to have Nightmare Alley. And I actually have a full in-depth review of this one as well on my channel. I'll leave that video link in the description below. But just to kind of go over my general thoughts, to me, this is a movie with two different stories in it. People either really like the first half of this movie or the second half. I'm someone who really liked the first half of this movie. I just thought visually it looked very mesmerizing to look at it on screen. I thought the carnival was really interesting. All the carnival had unique personalities and I enjoyed seeing them how they made this business run and I thought that was very intriguing so I thought this movie should have focused on that first half story a little bit more flush it out and I thought that would have been a more entertaining movie overall but it does kind of switch gears and gets into a second half of the movie here that does change locations and to me the second half isn't as interesting as the first half I don't really like where it ends up so to me it does slow down the movie a little bit but but overall, I think this is a movie that was well put together by Guillermo del Toro. I just think he did an excellent job from a technical standpoint. There are plenty of pretty voices with nothing to say. Do you have something to say? Now to get into my number four spot. And this is where I start to consider these are great movies to me and movies I enjoy quite a bit. We're going to have Coda right here. And Coda was an awesome surprise of a movie. I expected nothing out of this movie. I didn't hear anything about the movie. It was just like, okay, we're going to watch this movie tonight. And wow, I was pleasantly surprised. Such a good movie. This movie just did everything well. It's a totally believable family and how they have the banter back and forth and family dynamics all being done with American Sign Language. I mean, that was just so impressive how they were able to make so many emotions come across. So it really showed the struggles and obstacles a family like this has to go through. But the movie also had fun. There was a lot of humorous moments. And to me, this movie was entertaining from start to end. And it's a movie I can definitely rewatch over and over again. And it had some inspiration to it. Just really a complete package of a movie. You know who I am? Yeah. Do you know uh, who my girlfriend is? Barbara Streisand? Barbara Streisand. Sand. 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 Yeah, like sands. Like the ocean. Like Barbara Streisand? No. Streisand. Sand. 
not again in the third place. And this is going to go to the most controversial movie on this list. And that's going to be Licorice Pizza. I do have a full in-depth review of this one on my channel. So I'll leave that link in the description below. But just to give my overview, quick thoughts right now. I really like this movie. This movie reminded me of a classic John Hughes rom-com drama coming of age story type of movie. And we don't get a lot of those movies anymore. So I like seeing this kind of movie again. And to me, it was an entertaining story. There was a lot of endearing moments, a lot of comedic moments. I thought all the performers did a great job and they really got you invested in what was going to happen to these characters later on in life. And so I was glued to the screen when watching this one. I wanted to know how it ended up. Yeah, it did get a little bit more slower towards the second half of the movie, but I think overall it was an entertaining experience and it really did take us into that time period with all the costume design and set designs. And so definitely a really classic feeling kind of movie, but I had a decent enough time with it and it's a movie I could probably rewatch a few times. The first gringo boy who smiles at you. Now to get into second place, and this was my third favorite movie of the year. Yeah, it ended up on my top 10 favorite movies of last year. I will totally link that video in the description below, along with the in-depth review of West Side Story. I mean, this movie was spectacular. My jaw was dropped the whole time when I first saw this movie. Well, Spielberg was able to do with this movie just in terms of direction. I mean, Spielberg is the GOAT for a reason. Just how everything was put together, set design design, costume design, production design, the lighting, the shadows, how the actors moved and the dialogue. I mean, everything was just so entertaining in this movie. And this was a movie just impressed me so much because yeah, it's a retelling of a classic story, but how it was presented to us was done in such a fantastical way. I think this is now the definitive West Side Story to go to. So entertaining. It's a movie that I can totally rewatch again and again. Even though it's a longer movie, it doesn't always feel so long because you're just so entertained by the performances in this movie. And the musical numbers are outstanding and you can just have a lot of fun with this movie. And the message is still important for our society today. So overall, just a masterpiece of a movie. Hey, you're making a mistake, but I'm gonna let you make it. Watch me hit a few balls. All right. So tell me your names again. Now to get into my first place spot, and this is going to go to King Richard. This was my second favorite movie of last year. I'm going to leave the in-depth review video link in the description below. But just to give you my overview, general thoughts of it right now, this is a movie everyone absolutely has to see. I thought this movie was just done so well. Will Smith gives his best performance of all time, I think. I think he will win best actor for this one. He was just so powerful in the role and he showed all the flaws to Richard Williams but then also the positives as well and so to me this was a well put together story very entertaining and really just very inspirational as well so to me I just thought this movie was so powerful right when I walked out of it you know I was very teary I just felt moved by this movie and that's what movies are supposed to do give us some kind of experience and to me i was just so pleasantly surprised with this movie very entertained by it and such a powerful message and you know if you're somebody that needs some inspiration right now some motivation then you watch king richard because it does everything just so well and this is a movie i can definitely watch over and over again kind of getting to that rocky level of sports inspirationalness i'm not gonna let you doubt how could you this world ain't never had no respect for richard williams but they're gonna respect y'all so that will do it for my ranking of the 10 best picture nominees let me know in the comments below, in addition to your ranking list, who do you think's actually going to win Best Picture tonight? Do I think it's going to be King Richard? No, even though I'd like to see that happen, I'd probably lean towards Coda right now becoming the winner. But let's have those movie discussions down below. Also, if you're just discovering the channel for the first time, make sure you subscribe right now. I'm going to get you tons of these future movie rankings, reviews, movie news, movie hauls, unboxings, you name it. We'll talk all things movies on this channel i don't want you to miss any of that so turn on that notification bell so you don't miss when i post a video well we're waiting
Also, if you missed any of my reviews of these movies, definitely look in the description below and check out some of those in-depth reviews. Also, like the video, and this is Mega Mike the Movie Man, minding you to make every day a movie day.